Let's have a look at nuclear binding energy. Now when we're talking about nuclear physics, we usually define a new unit for mass, and it's called the Unified Atomic Mass Unit, which will just be AMU, or even simply U for short. Now the idea here was to say we'd like to have the mass of a nucleon be approximately one. And the easiest measurement that could be made was on the atom carbon-12. And what they did was they said, okay, that's by definition. We know carbon-12 has 12 nucleons in it. That's by definition say that the mass of a carbon-12 atom, and that includes the electrons, is exactly 12 AMU. That defines our unit. And that would mean that the mass per nucleon would be exactly 1. Now if we take a little closer look at that table, you'll notice here that a free neutron has a mass that's larger than the mass of the nucleons inside carbon-12. This is a larger mass for a free neutron. And basically the hydrogen here, that's basically a proton. And so the protons as well have a larger mass when they're free than they do inside of carbon-12. And in fact, all of the different atoms have a different mass per nucleon. It basically depends on how big that particular nucleide is. In really big nucleides like uranium-235, you're getting quite a bit of mass per nucleon. But in something like iron-58 here, you get the smallest mass per nucleon. And the very largest mass per nucleon is when you've got free neutrons and free protons. Now this is all related to the most famous equation in all of physics that E equals mc squared. And basically in very simple terms what that equation means is that uh, mass can be converted into energy. And the amount of energy that you would get if you converted a little bit of mass is a lot. Because what we're doing is we're going to take this this mass here in kilograms Convert it into energy, but we've got to multiply by c squared. C is 3 times 10 to the 8th, so c squared is 9 times 10 to the 16th. So we're multiplying by a really big number here. What it all comes down to is that mass is a way of storing vast amounts of energy. In fact, if we have a single 1 gram paper clip, how much energy would that be worth? Well, 1 gram, that's 1 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. And then we've got to multiply that by 3 times 10 to the 8th all squared, and if you do that, you're going to get 9 times 10 to the 13th joules of energy. That's about enough energy to run a city for a day. So a single paper clip, we take that mass and we could convert all of that mass into energy. It'd be a heck of a lot of energy. Now this has everything to do with binding energy. If we've got a nucleus here, on the whole, what we'd have to say is the binding energy would be equal to the amount of work required to separate and to free all of those nucleons. So you've got to pull all the neutrons, all the protons apart until they're free. The amount of work that you'd have to do would be the binding energy. Now, something strange happens when you separate the nucleons, and that is their mass increase. And we saw that before. A free neutron has more mass than a neutron inside of carbon-12. It would kind of be like this. If you had two magnets and you put them together and you got a certain scale reading. But then if you mass the magnets individually, one newton plus one newton, you get a larger mass in total. That's kind of what's going on. Now if we take that difference in mass between the free nucleons and the nucleons inside the nucleus, and we multiply it by c squared, it'll always equal the work done to separate the nucleons. In other words, it's equal to the binding energy of the nucleons. So we can do that type of calculation quite easily. In order to kind of give a physical explanation as to how this bonding energy becomes mass, uh, in the standard model, the bonds between nucleons, so strong nuclear bonds, are caused by interchanges of virtual, virtual particles. So the virtual particles don't have any mass, but they're creating the bond. 
and then as we separate the nucleons apart a bit, then what happens is that some of those particles with virtual mass, they become real mass and part of the mass of the nucleons here. So as the bonds are stretched and work is done, this virtual energy becomes real mass. And another brief note on that, we're talking about nuclear bonds right now, but these types of mass changes, they occur for molecular bonds as well. And basically, every type of energy transformation involves changes in the bonding energy, typically the chemical bonding energy between atoms. That, that means masses are changing and converting to energy all the time. Of course, it's only really significant for us when we're talking about nuclear energies and nuclear bonding energy, but it's occurring all the time. So let's get down to the brass tacks and see if we can calculate a binding energy per nucleon of helium-4. Now the way you do that is you have to consider the free nucleon mass and compare that to the bound nucleon mass. So free nucleons, and we're going to have to use the values from this table here. In particular, the values that we're going to need will be this one here, this one here, and then the helium-4. We're going to need these values here. And let's see how that works. Okay, so a helium-4 atom is going to have two neutrons and two protons in it. So my two neutrons and two protons. The neutron mass was 1.008. This is in atomic mass units, 655. Five. We've got to multiply that by two because we've got two of them. Now for the protons, what you do is you consider the hydrogen 1,1. One, one. And we've got the hydrogen 1,1 one, one nucleus is simply a proton. So that means we've got two of these masses of 1.007825 and if we add all that up we get a value of 4.03296 atomic mass units. So that's the free nucleon mass. Now if we compare that to the bound nucleon mass, in other words the mass of the helium-4, that's the number 4.002 six zero. Now you might be asking here, when I write down the mass here of hydrogen one one, that actually includes the electron. So this mass here includes the electron. Now we know the mass of the electron is not very significant anyways. Um, so we're really including in here two electron masses, but we're also including in here two electron masses. And when we subtract these two to get the mass difference, the electron masses are going to cancel out. So we're, in a sense, just not worried about the electrons because their mass is small and it's going to cancel out when we subtract anyways. So whenever we're talking about a free proton mass, we just use the mass of hydrogen 1,1. One, one. Okay, so our mass defect, that delta M, will be this 4.03296 minus 4.00260 and when you do that subtraction you get 0 0.03036 and that's in atomic mass units. Now what we can do is find out how much energy is that worth. That's worth delta m c squared of energy. Now there's a hard way of doing this and there's an easy way of doing this. Let's do it the hard way first so that you're more likely to appreciate the easy way. So what we would do is take our delta M equals to 0 0.03036. What we want to do now is convert it. We'd have to ask ourselves how many kilograms in an AMU. And that'll be in your data booklet. You can look that up. It turns out it's 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms are worth one AMU. So if you do that multiplication out, you're going to get a mass of 5.04 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms. And so our energy will be delta mc squared 
which will be 5.04 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms times c squared, 3 times 10 to the eighth all squared. Multiply that out and you're going to get 4.53 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. Now it turns out that for nuclear energies you usually express it in mega electron volts rather than joules. So we're going to convert joules to electron volts and hopefully you remember that one electron volt is worth 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So if you do that multiplication out you're going to get 2.83 times 10 to the seventh EV. Usually we don't express it in EV, we express it in mega electron volts, so we've got to divide by a million and that would give us 28.3 mega electron volts. Now that was a lot of work getting that 28.3 MeVs. So let me show you the fast way of doing it. This number here, 931 MeV uh, of energy, one atomic mass unit is equivalent to 931.5 MeVs of energy. And so our, the fast way to do this qu question is just to take your number of atomic mass units which was 0 0.03, 0 0.036 and you multiply it by this conversion factor. So you multiply it by 931.5 MeVs per atomic mass unit and when you do that you'll get 28.3 MeVs. So the, here's the fast way of doing it. Just use this conversion factor which will convert your masses from atomic mass units into MeVs of energy. What was actually asked for in the problem was the binding energy per nucleon. So this number here that's the binding energy for helium but the binding energy per nucleon, well helium has four nucleons, two protons and two neutrons, so the binding energy per nucleon, we just got to divide by four. So our binding energy per nucleon would be 28.3 MeVs divided by four nucleons, so you always just divide by the mass number, and you'll get an answer there of 7.1 MeVs per nucleon. And we'll take this a little bit further in the next video, but that's all for today. Thank you very much.